Hi everybody, it's Buck WSR Weezer putting the do into do it yourself and our do it yourself project today is on how to test and evaluate these coolant temperature sensors. I got an old one and I got a new one. We're going to compare them, and contrast them and test both of them. Now this one comes from my uh, this comes out of my um, 1995 Oldsmobile Regency Elite, uh, Oldsmobile 98 Regency Elite, and I was suspecting that perhaps the coolant temperature sensor was bad. And uh, here's the replacement. I thought it would be fun to just try and contrast them. Also laid out here, I also bought the pigtail because we're going to need to be able to plug it in and then connect the uh, ohm meter to read some resistance levels. Now you won't be able to see this too well, but the wiring diagram for my car shows that I got a three wire uh, coolant temperature sensor and this new pigtail, they all came white so I put a piece of green tape to identify the one that feeds the uh, cl instrument cluster, the gauge on the dash. It's these two others that we're going to test. So we're going to ignore this green one. This, these are the ones that communicate with the ECM and uh, talk about the uh, engine temperature so that it can make its necessary adjustments to the fuel mixture and things like that. So what I have here on this page is a printout of the engine coolant temperature sensor resistance tests. And what we have along the left hand side is different temperatures ranging from negative 40 below zero to 212 degrees uh, boiling Fahrenheit. And what I want to do is I want to take three different readings. I want to take readings at uh, 32 degrees freezing. We'll do that by putting these in, uh, in ice water. Then at room temperature, about 68 degrees or so. And then we're going to put them in boiling water and take re readings here at 212 degrees. So we're going to plug in the pigtail and... Uh, take a reading for each and then we'll, we'll mark down our findings and come to some conclusions about the condition of this old sensor by the time we're done. So let's do some testing. Alright so I wanted to do the, uh, so these are sitting, these the old and new coolant temperature sensors are sitting here at room temperature so now I wanted to take the readings here at room temperature so I got the tail plugged into the old one and we'll take a look at the meter and see what kind of readings we get. 2,960, 2,950. All right, we'll record that here. Now, at 68 degrees, we could expect a reading according to the according to the table of 3520. Uh, it's probably more a little warmer in here than 68. It's probably 72 degrees, so it makes sense that the reading is a little lower than what we expected. Let's try. Now let's compare the uh, new one. Let's see what we get. Wrong one. All right. 3,070, 3,070 ohms. So not a big difference between the old and new one at room temperature, 2950 to 3070, not too much different at all. Okay, so at the kitchen stove here, at uh, 212 degrees boiling water, we should expect a reading of 177 ohms. So let's give it a try here, see what we get. 650 ohms and, and going, dropping even more. Now this is the old one we're looking at, 50 ohms. For a five, I guess that would be 500, so. So we're down to 400 ohms, 390 ohms. So approximating the 177 that we were expecting. Let's give it another try here. Three ninety, three eighty, three seventy, three sixty. So 
still dropping 290 Well, holding a 280, so let's go with 280, and we'll mark down on our chart. We were expecting to see 177. The old one was reading 280. All right, so let's switch the pigtail. Well, I'm burning myself. Switch the pigtail to the new one. Drop him into the uh, cauldron. Giving it some time here to uh, heat up. Still dropping pretty fast, 650 ohms. Five hundred ohms. Still dropping. Forty two hundred, forty one, four hundred and ten, I mean. 390, 380, 370, 360, 350. So we'll stop it right there. It's probably about all it's going to get. We can record. So the new one was reading, was it 350 ohms? All right, so we'll look at our data and see if we can make some some come to some conclusions. All right, so I got the uh, old and new coolant temperature sensors here in ice water where they've been for a while. So we're going to take a look at the resistance readings on those at 32 degrees. Now the expected reading would be. 9,420 ohms of resistance according to the charts from GM. So let's give it a shot. Right now I've got the tail plugged into the new one. And with an eye on the meter, we're going to look at 8,630. All right, let's make a note of that. 8,630 ohms. We're going to remove the tail and put it on the old one. I can do it without hurting myself. All right. And with an eye on the meter. 8,610 ohms. We'll make a note of that. And by comparing these two side by side, the old red 8610, the new 8630. So not much difference at all. So if we if you zoom in here on the results, we check both the old and the new temp, coolant temperature sensors. At 32 degrees, 68 degrees, room temperature, and 212 degrees boiling. And my conclusion is, I had wanted to come away with the conclusion that the old one was definitely bad, but they seem to be giving very similar readings all the way through. So I'm going to install the new one anyway, um, because I bought it and it'll be done. Um, but at least for now, I haven't really resolved the problem that I was trying to fix. But at least now we know how to test and evaluate a coolant temperature sensor. And uh, I hope that helps you. 
thank you for watching this video. And this is Buck WSR Weezer signing off. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.